Hey all, it's Anitra. I got back from India a few days ago and I was there for a couple of weeks. My daughter's in um, private boarding school um, at a school that our friend went to there. She's in high school and um, I thought I made it through. It's probably like my eighth trip to India, something like that in the last 20 something years. And my cat is um, meowing in the background to go outside. I thought I made it through without getting sick. I went in August to take her to school and I was there for eight days and I went through with no hassle, no hitch and didn't get sick, came home and I was like, wow, that's the first time I've ever gone to India and not gotten sick. That's so cool. Well, I went this time and I was super careful and I got sick right on the way out. We stopped through South Korea and now I'm home and I've had like nasty, just really bad cramping actually and diarrhea and it's been hard um the upside has been like I've lost five pounds or so and feeling good about that but you know I was just thinking how oh my god it's crazy how the mind just goes to like severe health problems like since having cancer and it's really hard not to it's just like okay so yesterday I was vacuuming and I just broke like a little sweat little tiny sweat and I started itching kind of on my chest and I got these nasty hives. Um, it was just these white bumps and, and then they turned red and I'm like, what is that? I've never had something like that happen. Then it happened to a lesser degree last night while taking a walk. It was freezing outside, but I broke a sweat because we were walking up this big hill and it happened again. And I was just like, okay, so I looked up like diarrhea and hives and there's some disease or something mastoositis or mystoositis or something like that and I'm just like oh don't google your symptoms because you'll find something out there that's like really bad um and it talked about mast cells I think m-a-s-t cells I've never even heard of that um and like oh my god this cat so yeah I was just thinking like boy it's so dangerous to do internet searches for symptoms and I have either like a chest CT or a pet CT probably in a few months and I told my partner I was like well at least oh my god the other cat is meowing what okay you don't even know I have another cat where is he okay well I have another cat because <laughs> my partner moved in he has a cat so it's like the house of three cats which is insane it's too many cats this guy talks like crazy because he's Siamese. Okay, you gotta see him. Wait, there he is. He's pretty darn cute, but he's super annoying. So I've been feeling like really good. And then, you know, we got back and like my partner also got some kind of stomach bug. But of course, mine's like 10 times worse than his. And I guess that's how it goes, you know, when you're immunocompromised and things just hit you harder and it's just it's so hard for me to even admit that I'm immunocompromised I don't even like admitting it um um yeah it's just it's difficult because I want to be okay um I don't know if I'm okay <laughs> so I was supposed to have a I was supposed to have a, an appointment with the endocrinologist and I postponed it because I think I have to do a fasting blood work and I have one person that draws my blood so well and I don't like to have anyone else draw my blood and she's out sick so I'm like stalling that appointment until she gets back and um, normally I get a CBC with her every week but um, yeah so I feel like I'm doing pretty good in some ways and then in other ways like I feel like I've got this bulge in my in my abdomen and it's just like I think I've had it ultrasounded before, but, you know, I don't know. I just wanted to make a video because I was thinking how hard it is to not go somewhere extreme in my mind every time I have any kind of symptom that seems new or odd or unusual. And I wish it weren't that way, but I feel like that's kind of how it goes after cancer. And I guess also, too, because I'm... You hear this guy? It's like Siamese. They're so loud. Um... And it makes me lose my train of thought, which is not hard to do. Um, also, too, 
Oh dear. Oh dear. This is just how it is these days. I really miss my best friend. She died on December 5th and 2022. So it was a year. I went to India and I put her ashes in the Ganga and that felt incredible because she's very much connected to India and I knew that'd be something that she'd love and it felt really good to, to bring her ashes there. My partner brought his dog's ashes and also his father's ashes. So it was quite the the ash carrying um, adventure going to India and depositing our, our dead relatives um, ashes into the Ganga. So I just miss her. I hate cancer. Well, that's what I was going to say because I'm, what is it like freestyling and, and going rogue without doing the endocrine therapy, which feels risky, but I did just pass the five year mark, not my five year cancer anniversary, but because I've act, I think I hit my six year cancer anniversary, but my five years since having surgery. So it's like I got my ovaries out. I had a full on double mastectomy. If there were any like rogue cancer cells in me, I pray there weren't, but I know there can be stem cells and all that. Um, it's just like, I need some solace of like living a decent quality of life because I just couldn't, I just can't put more pharmaceuticals in my body. I mean, that's why I'm not doing the Fosamax for the osteoporosis. I've just been going to the gym, but the endocrinologist, he tests all these things and, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing what my bone density scan is after having gone to the gym so much and doing a lot of weight bearing exercise and, um, yeah, it's just like trying to live a good life and have a good quality of life without just being totally drugged up on tons of shit feels really important. And hopefully I'm not cutting my life short by making that choice. But I guess I figure like if cancer recurs, then I'll go on endocrine therapy and maybe I'll be unfortunate and it'll metastasize, which I think I don't even know if they give you endocrine therapy at that point. Maybe I'd go on a clinical trial or something like that. But um, yeah, I am taking a risk, but I'm just, that's what I'm choosing. So anyway, a little update. I guess I just wanted to like commiserate with the YouTube world about life after cancer and going to extreme places in our minds when like little symptoms come up, you know. So I hope all is well out there. I know I don't post a lot in here anymore. I just, I don't feel like I have as much to say. My energy is just low. Well, I'm still sick, but ever since I got my ovaries out, I just don't have like the oomph that I had. And I just don't, I just don't focus that much on my health anymore, I guess. I don't feel like I have a lot of story to tell, but I do like keeping my channel going. So that's what I'm doing. All right. Take care. Thanks for listening if you did. And see you next time.